Hey, I just want to make a quick video showing how to work with audio in C++ and Unreal Engine. So I've got two things here that have overlaps. This one's defined in C++ and this one's defined in Blueprint. And if I overlap with it by getting close to it, it'll play a sound. And then if I overlap this one, same sound. So what's special about these is it spawns a sound that will clean itself up. And once it's cleaned itself up, then it'll allow you to play another sound. So if you go into this rapidly, it won't play a sound until it's completed. Say it wasn't complete. Now it's complete. Same thing here. Now if we look up at the top left, you can see that there's printing for the client and for the server. And we'll get a little bit more into that when we start digging into the code, but you can see that there's some subtlety here about is valid and null pointer. So if we see now is valid is true and null pointer is, is not null pointer. But now it's not valid, but it still is null pointer. So if we stop by and take a look, the way this works in Blueprint is fairly straightforward. On actor overlap, we check is our audio component valid? And the audio component is just a component on the actor that we spawn down here. If the audio component is valid, then we already are playing the sound, so we just print out that it's already valid. If the audio component is not valid, so if it's none or being cleaned up, then we'll get on here and we'll spawn sound attached. And we provide a sound base and a component to attach to. We assign it to our audio component, and then we print that we tried to play it. Now, there's a lot of settings here, and most importantly, we have auto destroy set to true. And the sound that we're going to play is this meta sound that I've set up. And we have a root component that we're attaching to. And that's everything you need for Blueprint. Code's a little more involved. So if we hop over to the code class, and I go to the class in the IDE, we've got two things here. We've got the audio component, which is the component that we spawn. And we have the useSoundBase, which is a sort of base class for sounds. You can see that there are many different types of useSoundBase. Sound cues, which are the older type of sounds, are a class of SoundBase. And the meta sound sources, which are the newer versions, are also part of this U sound base. So this can take any of those or those other types too. So in our notify actor begin override, this is called when something overlaps the actor. Over here, we have a check on the audio component. Now, we, down here is where we spawn it. So we say if the audio component is valid, then we don't need to spawn it. It's already spawned playing some audio. Otherwise, you go down here and spawn it. Now, you might be tempted to have typed something like, you know, audio component does not equal null pointer, but that's going to be true until the garbage collector collects it. So the sound is going to finish before the garbage collector actually cleans up. The it's valid check will actually tell you, hey, is this thing in the process of being cleaned up, which will be set to true if you have auto destroy on. So if it's valid, we're just going to print a message saying, hey, the audio is still valid. Don't do anything. So we print a string to the screen, and we also log it to the logs. If the audio component is not valid, then we print a string saying that we're going to try and spawn it, because on client it will spawn, on the server it will not. And we print that to screen, and we log it. Now there's this function, gameplay statics, spawn sound attached. This is the same node that the blueprint was using, right here. And the first thing you provide is the sound base. So this is that sound base data, which could be a sound queue or a meta sound. And we have a root component being what we're attaching the sound to, since we're using the spawned attached variant of this function. The location, we'll just say it's a zero vector, same thing with rotation, a zero rotator. And the location type, this is just the default, keep relative offset. This is also the default, stop when attached to destroyed. Uh, the multipliers are just set to one, same as default, start time is at zero. No tenuous settings, no concurrency settings. And the important bit is auto destroy is true. So this is basically going to finish and say, hey, I'm garbage now. Let the garbage collector collect me. And the other bit of this is in the tick. In order to see the difference between the is valid check and the does not equal null pointer check, I put both of these into a bool and then I log them. So we have the is valid and the is not null pointer. And if it's valid, then we'll say make the string green to clearly identify it. If it's not valid, but it is not null pointer, then we'll make it yellow, which is kind of the like cautionary scenario where you can have bugs. And if neither are valid, then we'll just say red that, you know, it's null pointer and it's not valid. And then we print that to the screen. 
and then and then we make a string that we use to print to the screen and we actually print it to the screen that message and we log it and so now if i drop a breakpoint here we can go over to play and we see that the is valid is false and null pointer is not null pointer is false so it, that means it's null pointer and if we go in there we hit our breakpoint the audio component is the audio component is null we have a zero address and so we go down here we print and then we spawn attach and now we have an audio component and i'm going to continue and we also are on the dedicated server now so again it's not valid and the dedicated server is going to try to call this and spawn the audio component by step the audio component is actually null because there's no point in having sounds on the server now if i continue and I try to go back, we will see that the audio component is not null yet. So it's not null and it's also still valid, so it's going to do nothing. It's just going to print. I continue. And we hit it on the dedicated server, so I just continue past that. And now we can see that it's not valid, but it's not null pointer either. So if I go into this, the audio component is still not null pointer. It is still a valid pointer, but it's marked to be cleaned up. So if we go all the way up to the U object and look at object flags, it's something about mirrored garbage. So if we step over that, it is able to basically detect, oh, this is garbage now, we might as well spawn a new one. Now if we did a not equals null pointer check here, it would have actually just went into this branch instead. If I continue to do a dedicated server, we should hear a sound when I resume. That's how that works. So with this sound base, we actually needed to provide some data. Over here in the class defaults, I selected the meta sound here, but you could also click the cookie sound here and we can compile that and run it. Because this is a sound base rather than the child class. So, so what if we actually wanted to restrict this to only meta sounds? So you couldn't actually use like a sound cue or something, you only the new stuff. What we could do is go to the code and if we look at the derived symbols and we see that we have the meta sound source, I go there, copy and paste that, and paste it here. I'll just copy this and we'll name it meta sound source, wrap it as a T object pointer. Now we can edit it in the edit windows or we can read it in blueprint. This is what we need, but you'll notice there are some issues with this. So I'm gonna close this out and save everything and the first is that we actually need to use it as the spawn source. So I'll drop it right here. And I'll comment out that one. And if we mouse over that, we can see that it's having some issues with use sound base. Now we know from over here that it is a derived symbol. So you meta sound source, we go into this use wave procedural and into use sound wave, we can see that it is an use sound base. But the issue first is that in the header, we probably want to forward declare it. But let's just compile and see what it says. Okay, so it built, and here it says U meta sound source is an undeclared identifier. And if I go to that, it's right here. So generally in the header files, you forward declare. So I'll just forward declare it right there. But if you notice further down in the errors, we start having errors in the .gen files. Missing target specifier and this is most likely related to not having set up a proper C++ module. And so this meta sound source is in its own module in the engine, and we need to set up our module to use that meta sound module. So to figure out what that is, if I go to the definition and I open up the folder at this spot. And so here we have our source file. And if I just start stepping up, to try to find the build CS. We see here is the meta sound engine build CS. And if I throw that over here, we can see the module name is just meta sound engine. So I'm going to copy that. And then in my build CS, I need to set up my project to use this module. So I'll hop over to my UECPP tutorials.build.cs. This will be whatever your project name is. And under the private dependency module names, I am going to add a dependency on that module. I could have done that in the public dependency module names, but the private one is fine enough for me. I think public dependencies are the dependencies you also have to depend on to use this module, but the private dependencies are dependencies that you won't need to set up a dependency on. 
it's all handled internally to that module. Anyways, now that we've set up this MetaSound engine as a dependency, go over to our code. The Ford declaration should now be covered by this, and the module should cover these compilers. However, I think this still needs to know the concrete type as a use sound base, but we'll try compiling it again and see what happens. And so we got this gameplay static spawn sound attached. No related function could convert all the argument types. That's because it doesn't know what this argument type is. And so what I'll do is I'll just include that header. So include definition of meta sound source.h. And if we look up here, we have it right there. So sort those headers. And let's try compiling it again. And it compiled successfully, and I'm now booting up the editor. Okay, so now if we open up the Blueprint Child class of our C++ class, and make sure we're in the class defaults, and our meta sound source is empty, and so is our sound base data. So in the sound base data, we could select either one of these. So I'll leave that one empty since we switched over to this meta sound source. And if I click on the meta sound source, we only have meta sounds that can be populated here. And so we've successfully constrained it. Pile that, and we test. I'll drop a breakpoint just so that we can see that it uses this correctly. And if I step into this, so it's going to attempt to spawn the component, and it's using our medicine. And the ID component is now populated because we are on the client. So I'm going to remove this breakpoint so we can skip over the server. Go back. I heard it play. And so that is how to set up sounds in C++. You can use the sound base, which takes a, a wide variety of sounds. There is an audio component that is attached to the actor. It is just a scene component, which is an actor component. The sound base is sort of that generic class that many classes inherit from in some fashion. We get derived symbols. You can see all these different things that inherit from it. The meta sound source is the newer type of sounds for Unreal Engine 5. They are newer than sound cues. And the is valid check, just like with Niagara, is the check you should probably be using because it detects if it's labeled to be garbage collected versus null pointer. So it won't be null pointer when the sound is done playing because it, we have to wait on the garbage collector. But the is valid check will detect, oh, it's actually already waiting for the garbage collector, so it's probably irrelevant now. And that was because we spawned it with this auto destroy is true. So that it would clean up. And so I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any comments, concerns, or corrections in the comments below. Until next time.